So welcome everybody and thank you for joining us at Women for Solution webinar. We are proud to share our 162nd Women for Solutions webinar, where we create awareness, we connect, we learn, we inspire action to reimagine and to regenerate our world. I'm Laura Jadaru, coach, founder of Women for Solution, a global network of thousands of women and men, entrepreneur, entrepreneur in over 40 countries that share simple, effective, scalable solutions towards a caring economy. Today, you will listen to extraordinary women and friends, how they are inspiring thousands of adults and children to a more caring economy. They're both authentic change makers with a huge heart to create a difference. They're both co-authors of an amazing book called Maleku's Gift, a must read. And this ch children's book has deeply touched me because it explains in a simple way what happens when we live disconnected, when we live unconscious, when we lived on our iPhones, on our devices. And they do it through a very clever way through simple and effective tools of breathing exercises for young children, but are also very useful for adults because breathing is everything. And uh, on this, I wanna uh, share with you that this uh, book, Malekus Gifts, um, is, a, is so relevant today and the, the effect is, is having and will have on children will be huge. The co-authors, Jill Reed or, uh, is high school uh, education professor, professional. She holds a doctorate uh, on the University of Virginia in educational psychology with expertise in gifted education. Uh, through, uh, though she has taught undergrads, grads and teachers her favorite classroom is kindergarten, where this book is addressed. She's a lifelong researcher on social emotional learning, and you will hear a lot about it today. And Patricia Koster, co-author, has over 20 years of ex as an executive coach experience in Switzerland and on breathwork with degrees in transactional analysis and integrative deep psychology. She helps drive deep, deeper into human complexity, and she uh, also focuses on trauma and release work and study of physio, uh, physical and emotional and mental health. This story, Maleku, brings together the deep knowledge of these two amazing professionals. And uh, with that, I want to open to questions to the two of you. Uh, Patricia and Jill, let's start off by, by both of you giving us some words. Why are you so passionate about what, uh, about writing this book? And, um, and why is this book, as you believe and is, becoming an incredible story like a little prince, I think, in the future? You're muted. Yes, I just realized. Thank you very much, Laura, for having us here today in Costa Rica live, we are. <laughs> so we are here right in the jungle. And yes, I mean, I would like to speak first about my passion. So my passion is really to bring awareness and stimulate awareness to people because I think it's so important that we become more aware, first of all, of course, about ourselves, but then secondly, about what is happening around us. So that book kind of brings together a lot of passion I have. First of all, drawing. When I was a small kid, I loved to draw. That was all I did, storytelling, drawing, and over the time, I forgot about it. So that book gave me the chance to go back to that, to that passion. 
and I really enjoyed it. And secondly, to bring really to people, to caregivers, to parents, in the end, of course, to our children, a tool that is so amazing and so simple to use and just a must. So we, I am totally, totally passionate about that book because I really would love that this book would go all over the world and that we all have the chance to use our breath. So that's kind of, I mean, I could go on and on, but to make it short, and that's what, what's my passion about this book. So I'm coming at this book from the perspective of a classroom teacher and someone who has spent a lot of time um, teaching teachers. And part of what we do in the classroom and the exciting part is that we get to reach, you know, 22 to 30 children at a time every day. But when approached with the idea of writing a children's book, I thought, oh my goodness, how many children can we actually reach with a children's book that we could take across the globe. This is amazing. We can put these ideas out there and we'll, we'll be able to touch so many more lives than what I'm able to do in a classroom. So I felt like this was just a passion project from that standpoint, being able to reach so many more kids this way with a valuable tool for their lifetime. Thank you, Jill and Patricia. Really very touching. And also, uh, you know, Maleku's uh, gift is a special story about a little monkey in Costa Rica where you live. And I think I understand why you make it happen there. But uh, who finds a smartphone in the jungle and embarks in a journey. How did that come about? What happened? What gave you the idea of creating Maleku? Yeah. Um, so, so Maleku is definitely a very curious monkey. And this is something that we, we hope that children and, and caregivers will take away is that it's always a good thing to be curious. But our sweet little monkey does find a smartphone in the jungle, which is unbelievable on so many levels, but um, it, it is surprising. And she is intrigued by what she sees in the phone. She sees many places and, and faces and, and um, beautiful sights across the world that she longs to explore and packs her little bag and heads out of the jungle on a great adventure. And yeah, do you want to show yeah. I would like to show that picture where she actually packs her suitcase here, going away to the jungle and then enters the world the big world. Kind of this, this picture is a metaphor. <laughs> so our Maleku starts traveling the world. And as she's traveling, much like we do in our daily lives, she's meeting all sorts of people and also experiencing the full range of emotions. And she just subconsciously is dealing with those emotions and processing them through breath work. And as she goes through her adventure, we watch her become a little more reliant on her phone for companionship. And that brings us to sort of a climax where she discovers that um, she has an amazing gift and she wants to travel back to the jungle and give that gift to as many people as she can reach. That is beautiful and it happens that in uh, for centuries and centuries, I think this uh, this idea of going out uh, um, and then finding yourself and your truth inside you is something that uh, we've we've read in so many uh, uh, myths, mythological stories, and 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 and, and you know fire fire stories. You know, and I think that this is fantastic because this is a, such a unique gift, a unique story that happens today, but is so universal. Uh, how, um, uh, how do you relate uh, uh, Maleku's experience to her own experience with technology and particularly as it relates to children today? What, what are your, what is the neuroscience behind the creating that connection between the, the technology and children today? So certainly we see a lot of research in the past um, decade and, and really even in just the past five years 
on how the use of the smartphone and a screen is affecting our young children, particularly those who are really developing um, their brains and their, um, and their learning processes. And we are seeing, we're seeing research coming out of Canada, Japan, Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, uh, the US, <clears throat> excuse me, all over the world that is making a, a very clear that the more time we spend on a screen, the more detrimental it is to our social emotional growth, our ability to make firm attachments, to create relationships, to learn how to work in a community, um, to self-regulate our emotions. All of these things are being affected by how much time our children are spending on a screen. And most of these studies very clearly recommend that we reduce that time, that we employ tactics to help our children step away from that screen and learn how to uh, function and um, process their emotions and self-regulate their behavior and create uh, attachments and uh, learn how to work in a community. So there is definitely data that tells us that it's the right thing to do to step away from that screen. Thank you. And what about the fact that when we travel in an airplane, when we are, when children are in, their, in a car, they're given that as a nanny or as a educational tool to improve their English, their language skills, their, their mathematical skills. Many parents uh, see the research on the other side of all the, the, the technological or the good uh, that, that can give uh, the use of cell phones. But how do, uh, how do parents how do you control it? Is it one hour a day? It's uh, it's ten minutes a day. What what is your uh, what are your thoughts on that? So you bring up a very good point, and I think that that's part of what was really critical to our our book is that we wanted to say, you know, technology has certainly um, given us plenty of 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 really difficult things to consider. You know, it's given us a lot of um, opportunity and a lot of uh, benefits as well. And so part of what we're trying to say with our story is that it's okay to use it as a tool. It's okay to have technology. It's okay to take advantage of, of what we're doing with technology, particularly as it relates to education. I think that's really important to point out um, there are some studies in particular in the last couple of years because of the pandemic where we've seen groups of students who that we looked at in, in terms of their engagement with online learning. And the good news is that educational screen time is actually good. It's good for our students. So it's okay when our students are on there and they're on educational applications, they're learning, they're developing. Um, but at the same time, uh, we want to make sure that they're also able to experience that face-to-face -face interaction and getting out into nature and reconnecting to themselves and, and able to engage with uh, other adults and other children. And so most of the studies are finding that somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half is, is a limit to place on young children. And when they're under three, far less than that. So 30 minutes to an hour max, somewhere around there. And, and the real problems seem to come when kids are spending more than two hours a day in an online setting or in a screen time setting that isn't necessarily educational. So uh, Jill, what, sorry, sorry, Patricia, you wanna add something? Yes, I would like to add something, um, which is kind of, I think it's also, it has to be a conscious decision. Let's say if you have a two year old ch child and you have it in the scroller and the mom or dad who, or whoever is with that child puts a mobile in front of the scroller that the child, while she's carrying that, watches a YouTube video this is just ridiculous because a child with two years has so much to see and so much to explore. And I think that's the problem, you know, that 
sometimes we, we tend to have, okay, it's easy to give the iPod to the child. It's easy to give the, the TV to the child. Then we have our peace. But let's face it, to be, a, to be a parent can be very hard. It can have stress. That's part of being parents. And I think that's also important that we recognize, okay, there are times when we give it because maybe we are in the airplane, you know, maybe we really need to have quiet time, but it's a conscious decision. It's not just because I want to have my peace now. And here I see the difference too. Yeah, that's a very good point because, uh, and do you have very, very practical uh, tips that you could give parents other than what you already gave us, like uh, uh, other other suggestions of what to protect, what to do, because it really uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, parents did not have an iPhone or uh, an iPad. So what happened then? Um, what what do you think would be a re an easy replacement of a uh, of an iPhone, uh, given that it exists now and is so attractive? Because you know, uh, as they say, man, if a parent is on the phone all the time, the or or answering, the child imitates uh, the parent and wants to do the same thing, and so they think it's natural. So monkey do monkey uh, copy, you know, the child does that. So how do you cut that copying, how do you uh, inspire parents to actually uh, be conscious on, on, on making changes on that? Well, I think first of all, you have to be a role model. And it's also a chance for you as a parent to kind of think about, okay, I am working maybe on my screen, I am working and using my phone, but there are times I'm not working and I spend time with my kids and I can go outside, you know? What else is better than just to have time with your kids and do something with your kids? You don't need to have always entertainment because the child needs to kind, the creativity has to come from the inside out. And what happens if you give a small child a mobile this is so interesting, that small little thing, that everything around the child is, is gone. That's the picture and, and the story we have about Maleku, when she slowly, slowly enters in that world. And there comes the time where she prefers to sit with her mobile than playing with the kids. And I have seen that, that sometimes kids prefer to be on the iPod than to play with kids. And that is a problem. So what are the tips? How can I do that? First of all, you have to be a role model. You cannot be always on the phone and tell your child, ah, oh, it's not good, it's bad. Because it doesn't go together. It's not, it's, it just doesn't work. And some practical tool, maybe you, you have some of the practical tools from, from I mean, we, you know, we can go back 10, 15 years to when we were <laughs> raising our children, right? Um, I don't know about you, but I carried around a, a tremendous bag of all sorts of distractions for my children, and none of them were a phone or a screen. Um, they were, you know, just small, simple toys sometimes are effective substitutes. Sometimes just carrying around some crayons and some extra paper is a great tool to hand to a child to help develop their creativity, getting outside and exploring. Maybe you only have a pocket of 10 or 15 minutes. That's plenty of time to step outside and just spend a few minutes walking around, looking at things, identifying things. You're developing vocabulary. You're developing um, sights and sound, the ability to, to process all of these things. So, you know, they're just very little things that you can do. In fact, with breath work, and being and being able to teach these children these very simple exercises, it only takes a minute, a minute or two. And that's really simple to integrate into a bedtime routine or a morning routine or um, even like a nap time routine, something like this. It's always it's it's very easy to carve out a minute or two of your time to give your child a different tool, something that's not a screen. So those, that would be my, my practical advice. And maybe you have something to add to that. 
it seems also um, looking at from a little bit of background, it's also that we always think we have to do something for the child. We have to kind of entertain our child, yes. but actually that's not true. A child is curious like mm -hmm. our little monkey and a child wants to explore the world. That's kind of a normal, healthy mm -hmm. child is like that. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking about that now, kind of mainstream, you know. So when we come in that thing that we always have to present something to our child, we have to go to Disney World, we have to do this. I mean, it's all okay with doing that. But if we entertain our child all the time, the like child the becomes already addicted to that. And it, it, it's boring for the child to be alone. And by the way, it's okay if the child feels bored. To be bored. I love nothing better than to hear my boys say, I'm bored. Great. Go find something fun to do. Or let's figure out something fun to do together. Let's finish writing that book you've been working on. You know, those are, that's great. That's fantastic. If you're bored, then we get to create things. That's interesting. And I, I know um, Patricia has a granddaughter that mm -hmm. I've met. And I found her incredibly creative and active and joyful. And most probably you uh, teach her, and she's only a few years old, and you teach her one of your biggest gifts, Patricia, that is a breath work. And as simple as it sounds, breath work is a major and maybe the most important tool you can teach your kids. So Patricia, tell us a little bit about your journey in breath work. And how have you evolved into creating this book for children in breath work, please? Mm -hmm. So first of all, I think it's not just my work, you know, because f first of all, I think um, uh, my grandchild has really great uh, parents mm -hmm. and they spend a lot of time with her and they really answer their, her questions and they spend time with her. And I can see that, you know, because if, She's only once a week with me, so I cannot create miracles with her, you know, just to be, just to face that. But yeah, I take the time to be with her and I have the time to be with her. So that's the greatest gift you can give to a child, spending mm -hmm. time, spending time. And as you said, if it's just half an hour, that's okay too, but it's quality time, mm -hmm. you know. And yes, reading, um, I mean, it's a long story about breath work, but for me, it just started that I became so um, passionate about the breath because I felt it has so many benefits because it's not just it's not just the way or doing exercise. It's becoming, again, the word awareness and to become aware that I am breathing puts me kind of a little bit a part of me. When I take a conscious breath, first of all, I'm totally connected to myself. I'm just right here in the moment because I'm breathing only in the present. I cannot breathe in the past and I cannot breathe in the future. I am breathing right now. And that is a fact. And if I include in that anything, let's say a, a positive affirmation, a, a good feeling, this can give me so much power even when I have to make decisions, let's say I have to, I need to make a, a difficult situation. I take a breath, I first connect with myself and then I can make the decision. Be so, because sometimes we tend to make decisions very fast and then later we regret or we think, oh, I should have done that or this. But if you become more aware of your breath, you automatically step in your life to another level because everything around you becomes more aware. In conversation, in conflict, in, in everything, in relation, because it's just, it's just an amazing tool. And I, just to give you a number, you are reading 25,000 times a day, unconscious, automatically, which is good that we don't have to think about. But if you are just saying to yourself, you know what, I'm just going to, just in the morning when I wake up, I just realize how is my breath? Is it slow? Is it fast? Is it to my chest? Is it to my belly? Do I move my ribs? Anything, just becoming aware. And then I say maybe, okay, at midday before lunch, 
I take another minute, one minute, we speak about one minute. Mm -hmm. And before I sleep, I do maybe do another exercise to calm myself down. So maybe I spend five minutes per day with my breath. But doing that over a long period, it will change your life. It's just, I'm very, I mean, I, I, I just think all the children should learn that. It's so simple. We have it right here. It's here, you know? So why don't we use it? Why don't we take responsibility for our health? Because I give you another example, emotions. We speak about emotions in our book. Maleku has a lot of emotions like all the kids have. The emotion can change from crying to, to laughing. I mean, if you are a parent, you know that it goes like that. So here again, first step, the child has to become aware. I am feeling sad. I am angry. If a child can express that, it's already very, very, very good. Mm -hmm. And usually what we do, at least I grew up like that, we suppress our emotions. We put them down. They have no space in our society. And I don't want to say that whenever I feel angry, I have to throw it out to the people. Of course, now I'm an adult. I know how to deal with that. But it's okay to feel them. We have to go through our feelings. And then there is a tool we can manage our emotion. Let's say... You are anxious. You have to do a presentation. You have to do it. So you can use the breath to calm yourself down. Amazing. It's a management tool, you know, so every single person should know about it. And, and can you give us a little bit of, a, uh, of an example of, because what you've done is you, you, you uh, simplified in a brilliant way uh, uh, you know, breath work techniques that existed for maybe five, 10,000 years, mm -hmm. and you've put them in such an easy way. And can you tell us a little bit about uh, the breaths you, you chose and why, yes. how? Yes, of course. I would like to show you that picture. Here you see Maleku. That's kind of the point in the book where she reconnects to her heart. She puts her hand on her heart and she listens to her heart. And then she realizes, okay, what is my, what is kind of my mission? I wanna go back to the jungle and all the story who comes. So that's the, the turning point in, in, the, in our story. And yes, we made the breathing exercises very simple because they have to be simple for kids. And there is, of course, a science behind that easy breathing exercise, the heart breathing. And actually, it's called coherent breathing. In a minute, I will show you how that works. So the most powerful factor for our heart rhythm are, again, the emotions. Whenever we feel emotion, our heart rhythm is changing. And then, of course, our, our, our breathing is changing. Let's say you are extremely angry you are probably exhaling strong like like this you are so angry you know and then the opposite if you are experienced a positive emotion like joy care love whatever is positive your heart rhythm wave becomes smooth and balanced so there is a strong connection breathing heart rhythm and pulse so Actually, it's called coherent heart breathing rhythm. And it does what it does. It balances our nervous system. We have two branches. We have the parasympathetic, which makes us very um, excited. It can be also stress, fight and flight. Maybe you've heard of that. And the parasympathetic, which is for relaxing, calming down, digest. So it puts in balance these two branches. And we are not just relaxed, um, but we are more kind of reconnected to ourselves and in a balance. And we can also in induce that. So the way we are breathing. So I would like to do that now with all of you. And it's very easy. We are going to inhale for five seconds. And then we are going to exhale for five seconds. 
And always remember, sorry, yeah, with the nose, just with the nose, it's very important. And always remember when you inhale, there is always a slight pose. You don't in, out, in, out. It's not what we are doing. We are inhaling softly and we are exhaling softly. So this is like in, little pause, ex, little pause. Just that we are clear about that too. And at the same time, I will count the, the seconds. You can put your hand on your heart. And let's just start with inhaling. So we inhale through the nose for two, three, four, five, turning the breath and exhale, two, three, four, five, and inhale, two, three, four, five, and let it go, two, three, four, five. And with the next inhale, I would like you to connect to a beautiful emotion, anything, anything what comes to your mind. So we inhale that emotion in two, three, four, five. Let it go. Two, three, four, five. In two, three, four, five. And exhale. Two, three, four, five. That was quite easy and beautiful, especially when you inhale and you think of a joyous emotion. I think that's very, very powerful. And, yes, uh, very powerful. I, um, and tell us a little bit more about the other myth, uh, other, um, because you just described one of the many um, a, a, a exercises. Can you tell us another one that you find that is, is very useful for kids uh, in an early stage? Actually, um, just to finish that one with, with what we did now, of course, you are not going to tell the child all of that. That's why we make it very simple. A little child, let's say a three-year-old child, it, they, can, they hear their heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You have to try that. I tried it with my granddaughter. She can hear it just like that. It's hard for us because we have lost mm -hmm. that connection. But a young child is able to hear the heartbeat. And only that fact is amazing for a child, you know. Oh, wow, my heartbeat, you know. And maybe you can do it. It depends how old your child is. But maybe you will add something that you experience or your child has experienced a beautiful day with his friend or with his dog. And then he thinks about that dog just for a second and breathes into the heart. So make it simple for the child, of course. We have a lot of breathing exercise. I think in that book we have six. And um, actually, well, there is a funny one with the snake also, you know? So it's, it's um, the breathing exercises, you also inhale through the nose, always through the nose. And while you exhale, you purse your lips. So you inhale, and you make that, the hissing sound, hissing sorry, yeah. The hissing sound, you hiss. And while you are doing that, you integrate a movement with your hand. So let's inhale and So that's the snake, that's the snake breathing we have. That's a very simple and funny way to teach your child. Because always remember movement is also very important for a child because a child has a lot of energy normally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you also have one, the bumblebee. I think that's a, one bre breathing exercise that I find a, a very creative on your side. The and hummingbee. Yeah, yes. Yes, the hummingbee. Well, that's when Maleku is in Switzerland and she wants to try something she never tried. Actually, she wants to try fondue. And of course, for a monkey trying fondue, that is very difficult. So she's very nervous and she tries to get attention from her friends, but they are just occupied with their mobile. So she has to find a way to calm her nervous system down. So she sees a bee and she imitates the bee. And that's actually an old pranayama 
and it's extremely powerful. So what you are doing, you're inhaling through the nose again, you close your with your hands, your ears, and then you hum while you exhale. You can, we can try that. Inhale and hum. Mm. Basically, you cover your ears when you hum. Yes, and, and because, then... yeah, because that way you hear the vibration inside of you and close the eyes okay. that you are totally connected with yourself. That is, it, that has a calming effect, but straight away. I, I mean, now when I did it, I just yeah. felt it. It just takes, I don't know, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Yeah, a few seconds. That's amazing. And um, look, look, if there's a, any, I know Lillian Bryan, who's on the phone, uh, who's uh, on the line. She is, uh, 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 she's been a Women for Solutions a webinar, and she speaks all over the world about the Montessori program. She's uh, done this for more than 50 years, and uh, she's a really brilliant uh, educator. In the Montessori program, I don't know if you want to share if you have also a, a breathing exercises that uh, that you do and uh, you incorporate them in the system, Lillian, I, your audio is off. I don't know if you can change that. I remember sometimes you have that problem. So while you fix that, and if you want to comment, you can tell us. But um, a, a, but oh, there you go. Oh, it's a mute. Oh, it's you're you're muted. Um, you still, I we can't hear you, uh, because you you only um, maybe with your iPhone. You can give us the. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, um, let's see. Well, while we wait for you to Lillian to connect uh, with your audio, uh, I'd like to ask uh, a few other questions about uh, uh, when uh, your uh, Patricia, your background in breathing, um, how has it affected you as an adult? Because you see, even though this book is about children, um, how, do you think that this book also will affect adults uh, interest in in the breathing uh, methods that's what we hope really because in the end the parents are buying the book and they are reading it to their child or the teachers are reading it to their children and of course they have to do that they, they will do the breathing exercise first otherwise how can they explain it and be kind of passionate it and and, and use it mm -hmm. And I know from you that teachers sometimes have already such an overloaded program and they might say, oh, not something new, but really to be honest, that will help you in the classroom. It's an easy integration. And we do a morning circle in my classroom. We had a morning meeting every morning and there's plenty of time in that morning meeting to, to incorporate a breathing exercise. And it makes it simple and fun and to start your day sort of exercise. So it's it's more energetic and more energizing and, and puts the kids in the mood for starting their day, but gives them that tool for moving forward through the day as well. So it, it becomes something that we have in our toolbox to help our kids deal with situations that develop in the classroom. So whenever you have a kid who's feeling overwhelmed or, or feeling sad or has a, a different emotion, um, there, we're able to recognize that emotion and and help walk them through that emotion and give them a tool to to help them process that emotion. Mm -hmm. So it's something really simple and easy to add into your morning routine there in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to add. I'm sorry. I'd, I'd like to turn my phone off. You have to um, turn the the um, the phone off. That's the one. Just uh, mute it, Lillian. Thank you. So, can you so hear me now? Oh, yes. 
We find. I, I still. I, 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 I get the echo. If you turn off the phone directly, turn it off totally. Yeah, well, that's what I'm trying to do. Well, in the meantime, maybe I can share something what you asked me also, how it has affected my life. It has changed totally my life because, to be honest, I use the breath. Let's say we had, we, we had to travel last week. We had to travel to Pittsburgh, and it was really intense because we were traveling so much. And one morning when we had to do an interview, I felt really, I really didn't feel good because I felt Okay, like now traveling. can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Oh. Okay. I, I removed your cell phone from the system. So now you can, yeah, you're good. Sorry, uh, Patricia. Mm, I continue to later, it's okay. Yeah. You just muted yourself, uh, Lillian. Okay. <laughs> there you go, now you're good. <laughs> it's so tricky. Um, no, I, I cannot. No, you're good, you're good. Hmm. We Let's hear you see. perfectly. We hear you no, perfectly. Mute. Let's see. Okay. Then, uh, Patricia, do you want to video? Huh? But uh, Lillian, you're fine now. You're fine. Audio setting. Okay. No, we can hear you fine. But uh, Patricia, you wanna you wanna tell us? Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, that morning, um, when I felt really not good, so I had to use my breath. And thanks God I had it with me and I had the knowledge. And then of course, I'm not calming myself down because I need to have energy. So I put a lot of energy in my breath. I was breathing strongly. I didn't do my exercise I do normally. I was just breathing for half an hour strongly and then I was ready to go. So I think the breath can be helpful for so many things, even for pain. It's, it's just for anything. You just have to know a little bit the basics about it. What kind of exercise is good for, for, for what I need? That's important because otherwise you will feel lost because there are hundreds and thousands of pranayamas. So you have to know the basics about it. And then you just try it. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations? Uh, maybe look at the web, web which website to have the for a parent to go for the basics on on breathing uh, there are so many there are so many good things um yeah we have also yeah that's true we have i mean you actually the easiest way you just go first to our website molecusgift.com there you see um breathing exercises and that's the start there you start and then you, when you want to know really more, you know, it depends how much more you want to know. There are many books in the market. When you want to go, for example, there are also many methods. Probably you've heard of Wim Hof or, or Buteco. If your child has, for example, asthma, so you might be interested more in that and search a little bit there. Or you want to have something in general. So you can make a basic, basic um, training just for just for breathing and actually Jill and I we are also planning to have um, a, a one hour teaching class for teachers and also we would like to help of course and parents if they if they have question first of all they can just write us and then we try to give the answer and once we see that we have enough people we of course can also make a zoom call teaching them so that's just for starting. And then you will see what you need because I, I mean, there are so many possibilities now. So do you, in your website, you also have a, um, a school uh, program, like an, uh, you said you have one hour, but maybe you have more uh, to, for, for teachers. And that's our plan. That's our plan. You don't find it yet, but if you are a teacher and if you are interested, you just write us. Mm -hmm. Because we, um, what we can do, we can, for example, do it online, you know, over Zoom. And if you have 10 teachers, we could straight away teach them to do it there. 
including, of course, the book, because Baleku is, is kind of our main character. She is teaching that. So we would, of course, include her. So that's one option. We haven't finished our online course, which is just for everybody the same. But anytime you would like to work with us, just write us. Malekusgift.com is our website. Thank you. And um, um, yeah, can, Lillian, can you talk now? Yes, I can talk. And I just want to mention when we work with very young children around age three and four and five, we find that if we allow them to choose an activity that they are interested in, and when they become totally absorbed and focused on their activity, that is when their whole system calms down. They emerge from a concentrated activity, uh, an activity where they are really focused. <clears throat> they emerge calm and their whole breathing and their whole system has calmed down. So our goal for these children who are often hyperactive and restless and all over the place to find an activity they can attach to and they can lose themselves in the activity. And then we see this transformation, how their breathing and all of their whole system functions in harmony and they calm down and they emerge happy children. They lose their desire to be aggressive and they lose their hyperactivity from those kind of activities. But uh, what you're saying about breathing, I think the adults need to practice breathing activity, breathing to calm themselves because teaching is a profession where one can get anxious, one can get tired and frustrated. So teachers really need uh, techniques for breathing so that they can stay calm. It's the most important thing that when things don't go right with the children, that the adult stays calm. That's the only way to calm a situation. That's a very good point. I think that this book has it, you know, has it all so that the teacher can incorporate the children's breathing exercises that will help them become uh, calmer in, in many yes. situations. Yes. So I like very much what you are saying because actually what you are saying, Lillian, is you're talking about that state of being in a flow. That a child yes. is in a flow. You know the book Flow by Mikhail. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And mm -hmm. it's a phenomenon that is often ignored because in a traditional system. Them, children are assigned work, whereas in Montessori, we let them choose what they're interested in. And we don't have a bell that rings and says, you must stop now and do something different. So this allows them to become totally absorbed. And this allows them to move into that state of flow as you, it's a beautiful phenomenon. And we see it with very, very young children. Yeah. Yes, fantastic. Well, this is a beautiful Lillian to have shared this with uh, uh, Patricia and 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 um, and and. Um, yeah. and I, apologize. Okay. I apologize for the difficulty in joining you, but I'm so delighted to be able to hear you and see you now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So we are about to uh, finish this uh, beautiful conversation, but before we, we conclude, I would love that uh, both uh, Gillian and Patricia give us a little uh, closing remarks on, uh, on what has happened so far since the book has been in, um, uh, gone out to the press and, and become available, and uh, what what are the questions? What happens? What what are the schools' uh, reaction to this? And what are your hopes and dreams uh, in the next few years uh, with this book? 
Um, just from a very practical standpoint, I, you know, we've been traveling a lot. We've been visiting many different um, states and, and places and visiting with a lot of people. And the reception has been amazing for our book. And we've been so proud and so happy um, that people are really excited about what this book will do and how it will start conversations with their children and I think just from my perspective, I have a lot of educator friends and a lot of um, friends who are in, within the wellness community. And the remarks that I'm hearing are things like, we've really been working on meditation in our house and I'm so excited to have another tool to help my kids explore this um, topic even further. And um, you know, other people have said, we've got the book, it's in our nighttime rotation, it's enabled us to start doing some breath work at night um, with our littles. And so we are actually seeing the book in action, which is just a really wonderful thing for me from, from my perspective. And I'm sure you can speak to, to how you, you, what you've been hearing as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> For me, it is the greatest gift, to be honest. If somebody shares it, reads it, leads it to the child, the child knows. I mean, I just had a story uh, last week when a mom, I know, she told me her child, they're doing breathing exercise in school. So, and he, he knows a little bit about breathing, but he came home and he was so anxious and he just was so nervous. And then she, she remembered, oh, I can do breathing with him. So she made him breathe, you know, and he, he knew already. So what has happened, then he could sleep. He just fell to sleep. And she said, that was so wonderful. It's, I mean, that gives me so much hope, you know, because that's what we want. We really would like that people become more aware that because our world, we, I mean, we have no idea how the world is going to be in five years or 10. I mean, I don't know it, but yeah. technology. So anxiety, you know, yeah. people with so much anxiety and fear that yeah. uh, anything to help us be at peace, in a, to gain inner peace. And I think your uh, breathing, it's so fundamental to all meditative activities isn't it it's so fundamental and we forget about it we take breathing for granted mm -hmm. so That's it's true. wonderful to have the inspiration that you give us thank you so um yeah i think we shouldn't be so fearful you know because the world will change and technology will take over mm -hmm. i mean there we can't stop that you know, yeah. so we have to kind of become conscious, okay, to make choices. And that's what we want to teach. We don't want to say that's bad because it, it's just the world we are living in. So we have to find a way to deal with it and not to be, be always uh, nervous and, and, and anxious, just to use our own tool to become more connected and reconnected to ourselves. That's what, I, what we both wish with our book to bring into the world. Wonderful. Can, Wonderful. can you tell me again the name of your book, the title? Oh, you Malekus, have... Malekus Gift. Oh, that's the title. Okay. That, yes. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I will certainly get it immediately. Thank you. It's available in Barnes and Nobles and in Amazon. Wonderful. I will get that. Oh, I'm so inspired. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I think that I wish you would have written this book maybe even 15 years ago yeah. because uh, only now, you know, uh, we are realizing that breath work is a fundamental, essential tool uh, for everybody, uh, youngs to elderly, because it's, a, it's an extremely easy tool to actually incorporate without any, any um, how you call it, any props. You yeah. always breathe, but we breathe unconsciously. But if we breathe consciously, it, it just changes our, our psychic and our, 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 our connection with the present, to the now. And I think that's so important for the future, given all the acceleration, uh, the immense acceleration we have in our society because of all the, all the things that are happening. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very, very much. 
and uh, Patricia and uh, Jill, we hope you the best of luck with your book. I hope, uh, as I told you at the beginning, this book has the potential to become like a little prince because it has so many beautiful uh, words. It has so many beautiful drawings that actually will inspire deep change in our society. So I thank you. They recommend it to the parents. Yes. Uh, I am, you know, at, at the schools where I still work. It's a yes. wonderful tool for parents. Yes. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. And on that note, we will uh, thank you because you're really promoting to move forward to more caring society. Because without a caring society, we will not move forward much. And we need to move to a caring society for the world to be a happier, better connected with the emotion, connected with the present, connected with what matters. That is to care for nature and care for the people who care for work, for people. And like educators, parents, uh, people who care for the elderly. And we all need to learn deep meditation, um, breath work. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.